Awesome. Well, what about that kickoff? Welcome, everybody. And it's really great to have you here. Whether you are in the campus, here in the room, or joining us virtually, please feel warmly welcomed. My name is... Thank you, thank you. My name is Anna Patterson, and I'm very happy to be walking you through this conference today. On behalf of the CELAM team, I'd like to say it's great to see each and every one of you here today. Now, this conference, as we see, is all about content. So I'd like to start off today with a quote from an entrepreneur that probably many of you know. He goes by the name of Steve Jobs. Well, he did. And um, yeah, so I'd like to quote. He said that in my career, I found that the best people are the ones that really understand the content. And they're a pain in the butt to manage, but you put up with it because they're so great at the content. And that's what makes great products. It's not process, it's content. And so Steve Jobs was definitely a champion of content, and the Salumium Summer Edition brings together everyone who also believes in the power of content in making great experiences. So a lot of you might be asking, what can I expect today? What's on our agenda? We have stories from digital asset managers, we have a sneak peek into research from the latest study on product information management. We have also a digitalization disruptor here today who probably is going to surprise you with his take on business processes nowadays. And finally, we'll hit back later this afternoon and get a solution on how to use a tool that's run by humans to help you keep your photo licenses in check. And on another note, we are taking photos and videos today, so um, make sure you have on your best smiles. We'll also be sharing, of course, all the material at the end of the conference with you. Now, we have great people here today, and I want to also mention the fact that we have great sponsors of the Salumium, and they have been with us from the start to this day, and we'd like to thank them as well. They'll be introducing themselves personally later today. So everyone here today, I wanted to invite you to have fun, to stay curious. How are you going to do that? I would invite you to use the Q&A sessions to really ask those questions. We have the experts here today. Then I'd also invite you to use every break you can to meet somebody new. And finally, let today's event inspire inspire you, inspire you with great stories on product experiences and content so that you can make a larger impact tomorrow. Now, coming here in just a moment is the founder and CEO of Salem. A little bit about him. He is actually uh, going to give us an inspiring talk on making that perfect digital experience and he's a serial entrepreneur. Actually, he started his first business at the age of 21. So without further ado, I'd like to invite Michael Kreftner to the stage. <laughs> the floor is yours. Well, welcome everyone. And of course, it's a unique pleasure to have so many people in one room again, yeah. So we had some uh, internal meetings earlier this week. So I'm I'm not easily scared now of crowds anymore. But um, obviously, after nearly like a year and a half of isolation to a certain extent, it's really great to have uh, that many guests here. So uh, also from my, my end, of course, uh, a warm welcome. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, you have an enjoyable time today, either remote or again. Uh, in our Salem campus. So a big um, welcome here um, again. So um, continuing, uh, so to say, my intro a little bit. So yeah, uh, I'm founder and CEO of Selm. Um, but uh, just recently, and I'm uh, super happy about that, is that I'm now focusing on product topics. Um, 
So again, we have Horizon sessions later uh, for people here on site, uh, where I'm super happy to you know, engage with you guys uh, more in depth, but I will also do this um, remotely more and more. So um, please excuse um, maybe some slight um, slips, because um, just five weeks ago, I, I, um, I became a, a dad of a, of a daughter. So sleep and stuff is a little unplannable um, right now. Um, and actually, um, um, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, sounds sound strange, but still, so to say, I kind of learned what I'm doing here. Um, so um, I have a master's degree in media technology and design. I got, get asked uh, questions like that. So, oh, you're like, I don't know, you're a lawyer um, or something by, by profession, original, like many CEOs, and I really don't know what to make with that. Like, it's not a compliment, right? So, um, but yeah, long story short, um, I found it. Salem. Actually, I was still 20. Yeah, so nowadays I would turn this around and, and, and say, of course, yeah, um, I'm now not long not 43. Um, a few words on, on us, um, also because you know we get asked this uh, kind of stuff, so a few, a few facts on us. So obviously this is our campus here in Linz. Um, we are all over the place, literally, and of course uh, we have a larger office in Vienna and then we have colleagues distributed over more or less over Central Europe. Um, We've been founded in 1999. Um, we're growing um, on what I would call a sustainable rate. Uh, I learned a couple of years ago that we are now a scale-up, not a startup anymore. Uh, with 20 years old, you cannot call yourself a startup. And what really sets us aside is that that we have we're not venture funded at all. So. Um, we are fully independent, and, and this means that we are only answering, so to say, to our vision and to our customers and our ecosystem, obviously. So a few words on, on the campus also, because we get asked a couple of questions. So we invested nearly 10 million euros here in, in, in Linz as our central R&D and headquarter campus. Um, and we just recently um, um, finalized it to a certain extent. Uh, this is actually a solar power plant with uh, in total about 200 kilowatt peak of solar uh, power generation. Uh, we, over the year, we will be around 75% self-sufficient. On a sunny day like today, of course, we are more than 100%. And this includes uh, 16 charging stations for battery electric vehicles. So uh, whenever you are visiting us with your plug-in hybrid, or even better, a battery uh, car, um, you're obviously invited to charge freshly squeezed solar power. Um, and here in Linz, we have room for up to 140 people. Currently, around 80 people work here. Uh, again, we're quite fast growing, again, from our, for our uh, measures. And we just recently, as said, uh, more or less completed the interior of our campus. Um, so um, you've probably witnessed it. And of course, again, and in the future, uh, we invite our customers, partners, our whole ecosystem to visit us here uh, because we want to really make this a, a place where people you know, inspire each other and where ideas are exchanged. So before I go a little bit deeper and start with my actual presentation, actually, I want to thank, uh, obviously, our amazing marketing event team. So a big kudos to you guys, as usual, so to say. But just because we get used to great work doesn't mean it doesn't deserve an extra shout out. So of course, to the marketing and event team at Salom uh, and, and all the other people that are working uh, or did work hard on this, on making this event possible. Um, so Isabel is outside and doesn't hear it. So uh, relay that to her. I said that. Um, And of course, uh, a big thanks, obviously, to our partners and sponsors who also make this event possible, who also go with us this, let's say, extra mile in making an event possible that is in these times hybrid, which means on-site and the larger portion of the event is now virtualized and remote. Um, and then, of course, there is uh, an aspect that is all over us for a year and a half. And I'm not talking about Deutsche Bahn and their uh, <laughs> on strike issues, um, I'm talking about uh, the coronavirus. Um, and frankly, uh, of course, we, we took a risk to go hybrid and not just make it an, 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 um, an, an online event, uh, but we felt it was, again, about time after a year and a half. Uh, actually, um, we had th in, in total three tries to make this event happening as a on-site event, so we started, I think, in May 2020, was the original uh, planned event. Of course, got canceled then in, in, in early fall last year, got canceled, 
canceled. It means we've got switched to remote. Um, and we absolutely wanted to make it happen now. And looking at the case numbers, that's probably like couldn't have been later anyway. Um, long story short, we want to have it uh, uh, offline as well because that's actually not only the summer edition, but it's also the final edition of Selamium. So um, we are um, not going to do something like this again. Why? Because even before COVID like, turned everything upside down, um, we wanted to actually get much closer to our, and these three groups, so to say, are, are, are important, to our users, which in many cases are not, so to say, the people that making buying decisions, etc., but also, of course, those decision makers and our, let's say, partner ecosystem, uh, the ecosystem in general, but specifically our partners. So a one-size-fits-all event um, is what we figured isn't actually really uh, capable of doing that. And of course, with the transformational um, um, impact that COVID also had, um, we are now looking forward to, after this final edition of Selamium, we're going to set up a new series of events, again, tailored for those different audiences, um, making each of those event series more captivating, more uh, impactful um, by, again, being more zielgruppenorientiert as the uh, nice German word is. But of course, we all understand that COVID is, well, it is bad, obviously, uh, had a huge social and economic impact so far, but it did one thing, and specifically that's important for Europe, because we were lagging behind in digital transformation, and we still are, but COVID at least uh, pushed stuff forward. And definitely in our field, in marketing, in MarTech in, in specifics, but in marketing, in sales, and in product experience specifically, because obviously when you are not able to go shopping to a store, you have to go digital, and there's no alternative there. There is no wird sich das Internet durchsetzen question that somehow still um, 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 hangs in the room in, in let's say, in Europe. Yeah? Um, but at the same time, it, it showed that, um, unfortunately, we were so far behind that like many organizations really struggled just to roll out Microsoft Teams. Yeah? So um, honestly, uh, what, what have we been doing in Europe here in the last like 10 years? Um, Talking about this digitalization, um, we see or, or we think and we are convinced that there's one thing and we, we term this the content supply chain that actually is the centerpiece of marketing digitalization. Because you know, if you cannot physically experience a product, you will have a digital experience. And um, talking about supply chains, all of a sudden, yeah, that's, I wouldn't say it's boring, yeah, but what is a supply chain? A supply chain, and this is a couple of, I, I found this definition on, on kind of Wikipedia, and it's actually pretty, uh, it, it sums up pretty clear what the supply chain is all about. And that's actually pretty cool when you translate that to content, but still keep, let's start with a definition of a supply chain. It brings um, a company and its suppliers together to produce and distribute a specific product to the final buyer, yeah, and this network, and this is also interesting, includes different activities and people and entities, information and resources. And obviously, um, there's a lot of fl uh, flowing back and forth. So the interesting terms here are company, suppliers, and final buyers. So we're talking about a chain that brings together, to again, stay in the physical and in the traditional supply chain description, something like this that ends here. Huh? Okay, so this is the whole supply chain. So traditional supply chain ma management actually means, okay, I have raw materials, I have suppliers, then there is some manufacturing happening, then there is a sales process, then there is a point of sales, and then the customer obviously, hopefully, is happy with the pasta uh, that, that they made at home. So uh, from wheat grain, a lot of stuff happening to actual, I don't know, spaghetti pomodoro. Okay, so that's, there's a lot of stuff happening. And um, of course, in this traditional supply chain, there's one point that um, obviously uh, is of the highest interest to us. And this is when the moment when people are making the buying decision. So this point, this one single point is where experience counts. Huh? Um, and experience about what? Experience about the product. So of course, like avid brand managers will say, hey, uh, listen, we have this one great, we have our great brand, so the product, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eh. 
And that's really interesting, that information uh, out of a large poll um, conducted by, I think it's Gartner or any of the other analyst companies. What, what they found out is that 70% of the shoppers said that the product is the number one reason they're loyal to a brand. So now we have a situation where you cannot experience the product until you have it like at home, delivered by maybe a crappy logistics experience. Yeah? Um, so hmm, that's a little bit of a problem. You cannot really experience before other than digital. Yeah? And at the same time, this product, so to say, is 70% of the brand loyalty. So that's um, why, so to say, this point of consummation of content, where the buying decision actually happens. And that's not a singular point in this supply chain that can be on, on, on several um, let's say it's an it's an it's an unscharf, it's an it's a diffuse area where the actual buying decision will happen. So um, we are talking about some things like I don't know specialized landing pages that allow me to experience a product. We're talking about immersive thread 3D uh, viewers. We just a couple of minutes before talked about wow augmented rea reality is finally here. That's awesome. <clears throat> Honestly, um, I'm waiting now for 20 years for that crap to come along. When I was in university, and that really is. My God, it's 20 years ago. Uh, we already did like, oh wow, now we, we, we are using a game engine to actually do augmented reality and it's kind of near real time. That's awesome. That was friggin' 20 years ago. So actually not much happened in the last 20 years and finally stuff is getting rolling in this direction as well. Um, but don't get me started on like Google Glass and other um, augmented reality things that did not work. Let's hope when finally, um, like Apple and others are, are touching base, we're talking about more um, immersive uh, augmented reality experiences that need devices, obviously, to really consume it. In content shopping, that's something that, that we really see rarely, but that's what people want to do. I, I'm looking at a, a social video, I'm looking at even a piece of traditional content that's rather new. There's a product I like. It is super painful still to look that product up. Yeah. So, okay, that's a nice toothbrush. <laughs> I want that. Uh, just to try it out. It's virtually impossible. So in content shopping is something that is going to happen and has to happen. Um, product comparison tools. Um, I'm, I'm still wondering how crappy Amazon, for example, is in um, comparable, you know, you, when you buy something at Amazon, and with most products it is, it shows you comparable products. I'm re this is rolling the dice. Uh, it makes no sense in some cases, and it doesn't really help me in my buying decision. It's just confusing me in many cases. Sticky content, so content that, that, that follows me around in my, let's say, multi-channel buying experience. Again, if I'm walking into a store, I'm seeing Nike uh, 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 sneakers that I like, I probably buy them. If I cannot walk in a store to make this initial buying buying decision. It doesn't really mean that this is the buying moment, but still making this decision. Um, that's much easier than now in a multi-channel universe where I'm, I somewhere saw them, somebody shared something with me, whatever. I want to actually, because, and um, I have to advertise now the end of the day session by my colleague Peter Lehre, um, who's actually talking a little bit about the content end game. And a, a, a very important part of, of his talks is exactly this, so to say, that, that content, so to say, follows you around and actually guides you uh, in your buying decision. So long story short, I want content to actually um, take the decision off me. We are couch potatoes, in not only physically, but also in our mind. We've become people who are freaking lazy. Huh? Well, we don't wanna, so this uh, don't make me think actually now is across everything we do. In average, again, I, I guess all of you, including of course me, we're making very educated buying decisions. Yeah? We are uh, a, a conscious customer. But <laughs> if you look at us from 30,000 uh, feet, in total, we are not. Huh? We want to make simple decisions that somehow feel good. So content needs to guide us to this point where we make this decision. Product configurators. Um, that's, um, th that's something that I hate, uh, really hate, um, specifically, for example, when it comes to cars. So I have to admit I'm a little bit of a car guy. Um, and 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 I'm I'm personally giving an award every like three months when I'm trying out different car configurators and the current consecutive holder of the crappiest car configure uh, configuration experience is BMW um, and 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 honestly I'm driving a BMW but 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 I, I start hating the brand just because of the crappiness of their car configurators. Um, um, 
and the only reason I, I, I hate others more is because others are worse. Yeah? Um, and, and honestly, that really sucks. And we have seen stuff like that around for 20 years and again in 20 years. Yeah? Um, it's actually, a, and this is also a fantastic German word I like, there has been a lot of Verschlimmbesserung. Uh, um, but it's still a crappy uh, experience and it's about everything but not exciting me. If you want to get yourself frustrated and if, if you're into electric cars, uh, just go to the BMW website and try to configure yourself a BMW i4. Um, that's disappointment from the first second. <laughs> Deep zoom, content viewers and stuff somehow related sometimes with configurators and other stuff. It's still puzzling to me how little of that is being used. Yeah? So I, I have products that have amazing details. Uh, brands are spending obviously a million bucks on content creation that is probably done by someone, and this is something when we talk about the supply chain in a second again, when it's about the content supply chain. Long story short, it's still puzzling me how much, and it, you feel what happens, what most brands do, and that's wrong, is, well, we told our agency to do that. So that's obviously, looking again at my beloved BMW example, and I'm pretty sure they do it like that, um, that's the way into disaster, because somewhere content is being created, uh, by someone who's not neatly integrated in a supply chain that ob obviously includes, so to say, then internal and external stakeholders and the consumer at the end. Um, and it just feels, uh -huh, okay, well, it looks fancy from the outside, but the moment you want to, for example, get a little bit more details, why don't they do that? Why is this so crappy? Why now moves the configurator back when I try to zoom a little bit more? So sometimes it's technical bugs, but in most cases, it's a rift in the supply chain. Shareable content snippets, that's also something, you know, have you ever tried to, well, you find something that you like and then you, you share it with somebody. Again, we're in 2021 and that's still a crappy experience is, uh, in most cases. Yeah? Um, so I'm, 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 when, when I get um, um, I'm a text, so to say, or my parents are very modern, so they're in, in the late 70s, but, but still they're, they, they're very modern and using um, 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 uh, Facebook Messenger, for example, and, and getting something shared from them, I'm, yeah, it gives me nightmares. Um, um, and, and that's not, not their fault, I have to admit. Content while in checkout, I think that's also interesting when you are very late in the decision process and, 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 and you have all your stuff in your uh, basket. Um, and then you're nearing the checkout point. So to say, everything starts to be, all of a sudden, totally crappy. Yeah? So everything is really an experience like, I don't know, applying uh, for an Antrag at an, at an, at an public office. Yeah? Um, so you, you, you don't really feel the product uh, anymore. Honestly, when I'm uh, with my newly bought product at MediaMarkt, yeah? uh, I have it in my, in my hands. So this is an experience that I have. I, I, I still have the product. I'm, I'm happy about my purchase. I'm excited. But in a digital uh, uh, analog here, uh, my, my checkout process is very technical, not very experienced. There's a huge uh, opportunity there as well. And so much more, because keep in mind, our brains um, are actually 60 times better in, 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 in processing images and any kind of visual content than words. So why are we just texting people, so to say, in many of these uh, instances? So this is now where Selom comes into the picture because we are absolutely convinced that a, a, a supply chain for content needs to be end-to-end -end established within an organization. Yeah? This is absolutely important. Um, like, Go back to the traditional supply chain example. Just imagine a company like, I don't know, let's say Recheis in Austria or, or Barilla, um, and they say, yeah, we sell noodles, and we don't give a crap what happens, so to say, and the uh, who harvested and where. Uh, we just, we can't tell you that and we don't care and maybe there is wheat and grain coming in or maybe not and we ordered grain at the grain agency but uh, pff, we don't care. Uh, in a traditional supply chain that would not be possible, specifically in a time like, like we are seeing. So it's important actually that br brands do understand that the product content, so to say, is now the uh, decision driver. That's the only, the only thing that actually really counts. So, this content stuff deserves a supply chain, and for us that means bringing together, create, 
manage and root. Yeah, that's for those of you who are with us for some time, again, for at least six months plus, this is, so to say, our most compressed story. It's about creation, it's about managing, and it's about rooting of content um, to actually establish a true supply chain in virtually any channel. And of course, when we uh, look at the chain, so to say, again, we have stuff that happens one after the other. Of course, it's more like a in, in itself uh, a coherent cycle. Um, not going too much into detail here, in, because this is more or less what we do, yeah, from all product and marketing content in one place to all files with you at any time with our content synchronization capabilities. Um, at the end of the day, Selum is for those select brands whose products make them stand out. Yeah? And knowing now that, 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 that the average customer, 77% of them say that the product, again, is the brand loyalty factor number one. So let's say, Ah, I know BMW, so I, there is a brand uh, uh, um, um, awareness, so to say. They did a good job, obviously, there. Yeah? Um, but <laughs> my loyalty is very questioned right now because of the way I can experience their products. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in my, in, my, in my BMW every day where I experience the product right away and I'm happy with that experience, but I'm very unhappy with a lot of other experiences that have all to do with content. So good product, bad content of product in a time like now. Um, I'm not driving twice a week to the BMW dealership and just looking at cars. Nobody does that. Yeah? So there needs, to, there needs to change something. So shout out to BMW, you have to really do something. I'm actually ta tagging them on Facebook, like, I don't know, every two weeks and never got the response. That's another thing that they should probably think about. I'm really, so BMW, if you're watching, I'm sorry that you get all the, the, the heat here. Uh, all the others are equally as bad, so um, uh, that's it. With, with very few exceptions, but then again, for example, Tesla is not one of them. So Tesla is also not doing a great job, but they have a product that is so simplistically presented that we are on a completely different level. But Tesla will run, to, run into that issues uh, eventually. So only the perfect product experiences guarantee that Customers can fully engage with products, and um, perfect experiences need perfect content. Again, at any point in the customer journey, so when we remember the supply chain example, there is everything that has to do with sales, the actual customer, that's a long, a long thing. Um, keep in mind, the user or custom experience is something bigger than the product experience. As I told you, um, when I'm buying something, Finally, because of the great product experience I get first hand, hand digitally, um, and then the sp and then something breaks when I when the DHL guy throws it uh, to to my house like from from 200 meters, um, and then I need to actually do get in touch with a customer care, and this is a crap experience. That's that's custom experience too. So um, really, what we're talking here about is the first piece. It's product experience. This is like when, when we get talked, ah, so you guys are in the custom experience field. Yes, that's the bigger picture, but we focus on the product experience part. And what means we focus is that we work with marketing teams that they can create, manage, and root perfect content for those, let's say, perfect product digital. But digital implies that everything is digital, and we're talking about physical storefronts as well. Uh, so in-store communication is a big thing. But who needs us? So our Selm Cloud is for distributed marketing teams, and nowadays everyone is distributed. Yeah? There's no, no, we didn't have COVID. Yeah? So everyone is now home office, um, has to work with partners where you can't meet all the time. Um, and also, so to say, it means now with the, the, the thing of in-housing responsibility and in-housing governance of these content processes, um, now we have all of a sudden creative teams across organizations because you cannot do everything yourselves, but you need to have governance inside. This is why, for example, our creative collaboration tools are so important for that because you as the brand, so to say, need to be in control of all these processes. The governance part is extremely important. And this is, so to say, where this comes along. Uh, and of course, product people of all kinds, many of our customers, we have a, a, a ever-growing, for example, retail arm in our customers, and that's another very important um, 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 element, and they would rather call themselves um, 
Sortimentsverantwortliche, for example, yeah, this, this is something that I would call a product person uh, in English. Um, and of course, anyone who's engaged in digitalizing marketing processes. So um, what processes in uh, differentiation to people, what processes need us, so to say, or would profit from deploying of Selm? So whenever it's about premium product content, um, product and marketing content in large organizations and large volumes of product content. This is also where we see us, where we see our strengths versus, for example, uh, some competitors, but also in a, in a, in a context we'll, we'll, we'll hear from our partners at, at Frontify, for example, that are very much into uh, brand content management. And again, we see us as the product content managers. Big um, difference there. And our cloud consists of six distinctive components. Um, many of our customers are using only one still of those six components, maybe two, because integrations has always been a big thing, but we'll see this in a second. Uh, but there's a, a couple of others that actually play a decisive role in this content supply chain idea. So digital asset management, um, also, um, I tell this with every opportunity I have, I'm super happy that the crypto guys are now stealing this term from us. Yeah? So um, if you uh, are dealing with digital asset management and you tell this to somebody, they might think that you are dealing with crypto assets. Yeah? And by now would be absolutely filthy rich, obviously, because um, you invested in Dogecoin before Elon Musk said it's cool. So um, nope. Um, what we are doing is being a content hub. I think that's a much better description of what we do. Content hub, uh, content and hub, much better than digital asset management. But still, this is our market fear and, and maybe in, in the next two years, we're gonna lose this term anyway, because again, the crypto guys say, hey, digital asset management, just Google digital asset management. Half of the results already are um, um, around the field of cryptocurrencies. Now it comes to, so to say, what we consider kind of newish still, even though we are in this field heavily engaged for the last like two years, agile collaboration. We believe that marketing transformation and digitalization of marketing processes needs a new way of working together because marketing teams are used to have, and frankly, you know, I, I come from the field of marketing. Um, we, we would describe this as chaotic, as let's call it self-organizing, but it, actually it's, it's, People do not respond well to too strict uh, planning because the planning then will take longer than the actual execution and people will, of course, then refuse to do that. So Agile here, a principle that has been established in IT slash software development first, is actually a great, great opportunity here to get stuff done without, you know, crashing people with overboarding processes. Um, and actually, we believe that uh, the tasking in itself is not enough. It needs to be tasking that allows you to do something with files, with content, so to say. Um, and this is what, why we built, so to say, our workrooms capability. Um, this actually evolved into automation. You want to automate recurring stuff. You want to still give things an order by that creating workflows in a way, again, that is, and we are now entering the cycle thingy, so supply chain in a, in a cyclish way. Uh, so you wanna automate stuff. You wanna get feedback from the stuff that has been created. So um, you wanna recreate stuff. You wanna keep stuff up to date. Nothing ruins a decision process more than let's say um, showing the bike that's actually two seasons old. Yeah? Um, and specifically if you're dealing with a very interested um, audience. Yeah. Um, so um, if if I'm I'm a, I'm a pilot, I, fl I fly myself, and I'm member in some you know pilot groups on Facebook, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and it's super great if you want to give half of those people a a, a stroke. Um, you post a photo of an Airbus, and uh, you 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 name it with I like that Boeing. Yeah. Um, so they go ballistic. And uh, I, I heard that, for example, bicycle enthusiasts do the same. You post, a, I don't know, a, a trek bike and say, wow, the latest specialized is really awesome. And they go, they go nuts. So it's important, so to say, that content stays up to date, that content is um, 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 always uh, recent. And this is where, so to say, getting feedback, approving content is very important. 
the file syncing and sharing tool, and uh, we still absolutely believe that this is one of the core assets that we bring to the table um, because it's fully governance file synchronization. And that's something that cannot be stressed enough that we are the only vendor that, that does that. And then, of course, our big strength is integrations and marketplace. So to round this up, uh, what we do, so the little bit of the sales pitchy part of my presentation, it's a six component, one central hub for content. It's a new and simple way for a project that deploys or employs agile principles. Um, it's streamlining creative processes by putting a little bit of workflowy capabilities in there, but in a completely new way. Um, this what we invented there, so to say, is that what we call a flow board, which is, so to say, a task board that can give stuff a direction. Um, it's about content approvals, online proofing, enterprise-grade file syncing that provides full governance, not external systems, full content governance. Um, and at the end of the day, so to say, um, these are capabilities that really set us aside. So we still have the most versatile, flexible, and capable digital asset management system in the market. That came with considerable complexity. Uh, so long story short, we are currently working hard on keeping capability and versatility and reducing complexity. And with our latest user interface and um, um, user experience upgrades, um, I think that that shows. We're the only vendor that has its own content synchronization tool. And quite frankly, after seeing how complex and technically demanding that is, I now know why all the others said, <laughs> nope. Um, so that's really a lot of work and a big thumbs up to our engineering teams that really work their asses off uh, with, with, with whatever we do around Salem Drive. Um, with our workrooms and again by that, with the workflow capabilities embedded, et cetera, et cetera, flow board capabilities, uh, we still have, and actually uh, gaining more traction, there are even uh, most sophisticated content creation um, and teamwork management solutions uh, on the market. We are independent and focused. This is also something that, that we like about how we do it, but also many of our customers. We are not in team Adobe or we are not in team uh, um, um, SAP per se. Uh, we are uh, agnostic. So, and I think we have a, a clear vision where we want to and how we want to shape the world of commerce. Um, and we have an immense range of industry experience and the sheer number of our amazing customers. And that's a big shout out, obviously, to our, to our customers um, and our range of industry in which we are working. Now, getting off a little bit of the, hey, wow, Salem is awesome um, 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 element, um, the story doesn't end with the experience. What you want to have is excitement, so the opposite of disappointment. Um, again, shout out to BMW. Um, and experiences need to create excitement. And, and obviously, in many cases, we have experience. Sometimes we have even uh, disappointment. So this is another interesting statistics that, that, we, that, we, um, that we found, that actually um, the CMOs of international companies, again, this is a little North American heavy, but again, we have to admit, North America really is leading the way there. Uh, they are now considering new digital experiences as the number, number one priority of, of, of things because an experience should transform into excitement. And coming to the end of my presentation, so to say our mission changes with that or evolves with that because right now, and again, this is what the presentation is all about, um, we enable perfect product experiences by making perfect product content available anywhere and you know, the whole content supply chain principle. In the future, we're gonna move much more into the point of making the actual decision, which is the point of experience. So we wanna provide much more halbfertig Produkte, again, to term a traditional uh, example here, uh, in means of the experience layer. Um, and quite frankly, for us, and I think for everyone, with this pressure on digital experiences, it's a pretty, pretty straightforward inno innovate or die uh, uh, situation. So for Salom, the next 12 months will be the most exciting and forward pushing that we ever had. For now, a year and a half, we're investing heavily in technology that you're gonna see next year, and we're gonna actually even uh, push more and harder from, so to say, the next month uh, on. Um, so my closing remark is join us in uh, leading the way um, how people are 
experiencing products in the future. Thank you. Oh, wonderful. Thank you for that great, inciting experience to kick off our conference. And now we'd like to open the floor to questions. So if anyone uh, would like to ask a question, we're going to have a microphone brought around by Tanya. And before we get started, I just wanted to ask, you mentioned a lot of stages in this buying experience, from the car configurators to I can make a purchase while scrolling on social media. And you also mentioned that there'll be some new releases in 12 months. Can you give us like a hint into which area, if they're involved in the buying process? Well, as, as I said, it's what, what for us is kind of a new thing is to provide more, again, what, um, half, half done products or halbfertig Produkte, which makes it more, I, I think, uh, understandable towards the experience endpoint. Um, and I think, I think that's, that's obviously needed yeah, because um, ex experiences should be easier to create um, and not just the content, ob obviously, this is what we currently are fully focused on, that you can easily create content, but in the future the whole experiences should be easier to create and you need, you need much more stuff, so to say, that you pour into an, an, a great and exciting experience, so to say. So this is, this is what we are focusing on um, um, massively. Massively, all right. And well, we're looking forward to those developments. And does anyone have a question here for our Michael Kreftner? Don't be shy. I mean, I always have backup questions as well, but I mean, this is your chance. I mean, <laughs> you can stretch that arm, grab the microphone. But innovation probably plays a large role in these developments. And I mean, you can often get new ideas from your team. So is there any sort of systemized innovation processes that you have with Salem team? Yeah, we actually have a multi-tiered process there. Um, this, so to say, combines um, innovation streams from, let's call it, um, there's a visionary level that is kind of, I would say, self-generated, but of course it also relies on a lot of market observation, etc. And then are two more um, hands-on levels. One of them is the back channel that we get from our customers and partners through our account management teams. And then it's our product management team that actually you know, also sifts themselves through ideas um, um, and of course the uh, feedback that they get when talking with customers. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And we're establishing a new, what we call, um, 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 like a, a new, I wouldn't call it high-end consultancy, but still it is uh, a consulting practice that should give support to our partners and of course directly consult customers when needed. Um, and that's uh, this kind of a digital experience consulting that, that really is another channel that we want to establish to actually get um, challenge ideas and, 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 and yeah, challenge ideas with, with our audiences and getting immediate feedback and not just, okay, let's, let's figure it out how, how well this works once it's released. Um, and there's much more prototyping going on at Salem right now. So we're in mm -hmm, touch with mm -hmm. a couple of, let's say, customers that we have selected. So of course, if we are now here in the audience here or remote customers who are interested in, um, um, in, in entering this, so to say, I wouldn't call them guinea pig um, area, but uh, this is more like where you, it, all you have to invest is a little bit of time to get us challenge ideas with you. Uh, and, and, and I think by that, giving a, getting a, a strong voice in, in, in certain product development areas. All right, great. And I mean, you mentioned you had 80 people here in Linz, and I'd be curious to know how many people you have in, in the other areas. In the other offices. Uh, well, the second large office is, is Vienna. So in total, I think we are now a little bit more uh, around 110 people in total. Um, and then, of course, we have colleagues in account management and sales that are, so to say, um, remote, remote. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, but our two main office locations are Linz and Vienna. Um, and, and yeah, this is, uh, so to say, with different units in the different locations. Well, that's great for a scale-up business, like you mentioned, for Selim. And wonderful. Let's, let's give him a round of applause for this opening. I think we have, we have remote questions, right? Do we have any questions yes. from the chat? Yes, we have two questions from our online audience. The first one is, what are some of the new technologies you have invested in? 
Well, we invested a lot of money in magic, and magic is very expensive. Um, <laughs> I think that would definitely take now an hour and a half. Um, um, I think that the, the answer probably was given already, maybe a little bit. So it's it's geared towards experiences, um, uh, and from a technology perspective, for us, the the the, the journey into a, a true cloud offering um, is is so to say nearing its its end. Yeah. Okay, and the second question is. How uh, can this um, user-generated content you mentioned be best integrated into the supply chain you mentioned? Well, actually, user-generated content is something that wasn't really on the list because user-generated content actually is a hype that has faded away a little bit. And the, the most important reason actually for that, so what we now have is content creators, so the influencers, so to say, but those people actually are acting like professionals. Um, they, they invest a lot of time and effort into creating that content. They, they even make sure that there's the right situation is cleared, et cetera, et cetera. And we were talking for years, actually, years ago, four years with customers about, hey, how do you guys deal with user generated, truly user generated content? And actually it only got momentum again with the users being content professionals, so to say, content creators, influencers, that again, um, uh, are actively working on that field. Just the average Joe like we are that, that, so to say, creates content, that's turned out to be actually not a big uh, uh, factor in, 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 in everything we see happening. Um, again, we now see content that looks a little bit, like, looks a little bit user generated, but is actually created by professionals. Again, professional might be here under discussion, but but that's happening. And of course, in the supply chain, what we are seeing is that people are posting content, for example, as part of a review. So that's another thing, and that's very helpful for many people in their buying decisions. So you buy something, um, you see a comment like the classic review, and then the review contains photos that show the product being, let's say, deployed, uh, built, et cetera. And frankly, that really increases the credibility of a review because it's now, well, you have a photographic evidence that the person that says he bought something also really uses it. Um, yeah, one of the listener really likes your vision, but he's questioning how this can be implemented in a very old, uh, large and international enterprise. <laughs> Thank you for the very <laughs> short answer. Thank you, Michael Kreppner.